Okay, here we're going to convert our payments for the purchases of inventory and other materials or products from the cash basis to the accrual basis. Now when we're talking about the cash basis, this is where we go out and we purchase some inventory or materials, but we don't recognize it as an expense until we actually make cash payments for those inventories. Now for our accrual basis, these are where we set up these accounts here would like to be our accounts payable as a liability on the balance sheet and our inventory account which was an asset on the balance sheet. Now our accounts payable, this is where we would have re received some material or inventory in advance of uh, paying for it. Now for our inventory, this is where we would have purchased some material or inventory in advance and we wouldn't recognize it as an expense until we actually use this inventory. Okay, for our accrual basis accounting, this is how we'd use these accounts. Our accounts payable, we'd credit it or increase it for any purchases of inventory or materials that we purchased on credit, and then we'd immediately recognize them as expense or debit our expenses for those materials. And then when we make payments for those inventories or materials, we debit or reduce our accounts payable, and then we'd credit or reduce our cash for those payments. Now, for our inventory account here, we debit or increase our inventory for any purchases and then we'd credit or reduce our cash for those purchases. And then when we use the inventory we'd credit or reduce our inventory account here and then we'd debit or increase our expense account for those inventories. Now what I'm going to do here to calculate this accrual basis, I'm going to take the changes here in our accounts payable and on changes in our inventory account and I'm going to balance them here with our expense account or our cost of goods sold for those inventories or those purchases. And any of the transactions that would have normally gone on our accrual basis to our cash account here or reduce our cash account, instead I'm just going to take and I'm going to balance them here with our expense account or our cost of goods sold. Okay, for making this conversion to the accrual basis, we first have to determine the changes here in our accounts payable and our inventory account. So let's look at the case here where we had a $15,000 increase in our accounts payable. The beginning of the year balance was $100,000, end of year balance was $115,000. So we'd credit or increase our accounts payable for the $15,000. Now looking at the case here, we had a $25,000 reduction in our accounts payable. Beginning of the year balance was $100,000 thousand this end of year balance was seventy five thousand so we'd credit a debit or reduce our accounts payable for the $25,000. And then for our inventory account, in the case here we had a $20,000 increase in our inventory. We debit or increase our inventory for that amount. And then where we had a $12,000 decrease in our inventory, we'd credit or reduce our inventory by that $12,000. Okay, let's look at the example here where we had an increase in our accounts payable of $15,000 for the year. So we'd credit or increase our accounts payable for $15,000 and then our balancing entry here would be to debit our cost of goods sold or expense for $15,000. Now, where we also had a decrease in, in our inventory of $12,000 for the year, we'd credit our inventory for $12,000 and then our balancing entry here would be to debit our cost of goods sold or our expense account here for $12,000. Now to calculate our accrual basis, all we would take is our $100,000 cash pay a basis here. Those are the payments that we made here in cash. And then we'd add the $15,000 here in increase in accounts payable and the $12,000 here uh, reduction in our inventory. And then the balance here would be $127,000. And that would be our accrual basis. Okay, let's look at the example here where we had a $25,000 reduction in our accounts payable for the year. So we'd debit or decrease our accounts payable by $25,000 and then the balancing entry would be to credit or reduce our cost of goods sold by $25,000. Now where we also had an increase here in our inventory of $20,000, we debit or increase our inventory for $20,000 and then the balancing entry here would be credit or reduce our cost of goods sold for $20,000. 
dollars. And then to calculate our accrual basis, all we would take is our cash basis here of $100,000 that were the cash payments that we made for the year, and then they would re be reduced here by these credit amounts here of $25,000 for the reduction in accounts payable and the $20,000 here that was the increase in our inventory and then the balancing amount here would be $55,000 and that would be in our accrual basis. Okay, to summarize how we converted our payments for purchases of inventory and other materials from the cash basis to the accrual basis, we used our accounts payable, which is a liability on the balance sheet, and we used our inventory account here, which is an asset on the balance sheet. And we had to determine the change in both of these accounts payable and our inventory account that we made for the year. And then we would take those changes in our accounts payable and our inventory account and we'd balance them here with our cost of goods sold or our expense account on the income statement. And then we took our cash basis and we netted out any of those changes here in our accounts payable or inventory account and then that net amount here, the difference between the cash basis and the net amount here in our accounts payable and the inventory account would be our accrual basis.